Hi, I'm Everett Maxine, and I would like to thank you for listening to The Absence of Her. Please remember to like, follow, and most importantly, share. Are you a YouTube fan? You can also follow my channel, Everett Maxine. And listen to all the past and present episodes. I've loved and worshipped my whole life long. I've lent a fair hand now and then. I've praised the best. I've prayed for the rest. I comfort the lonely once again. I've been strong in my faith. I've lived by your word. Lord, I've obeyed your commands. Now my body and soul are long overdue. So Lord, will you take me home too? Lord, you've taken home the weak. You've taken the strong. You've taken the old and the new. You've taken the ones that I loved the most. So, Lord, will you take me home too? My dear husband, I miss. All my friends have gone. I've noticed you called them home too. There's no one familiar I see around me. So, Lord, will you call me home too? Don't leave me behind. In this crazy old world. I'm not wanting to stay here alone. I've prepared myself. To meet you real soon. So Lord will you take me home too? As the twilight fell. On the new crispy morn. She grew still with a small peaceful smile. My prayers have been answered. And it's not too soon. My Lord is taking me home too. Written by Judy A. Campbell Have you ever been in a place in your life where you would give anything for someone else? Most of the time we say no, right? But what about when you love and care about someone that passes away? At that point, the material things that brought you so much joy and comfort become meaningless. Bargaining is not just a stage in grief, but something we may often do unintentionally. Lord, if you heal them, I will do better about tending church. Lord, if I will, when all God wants is for us to use our free will to say we will. This stage can lead you down a spiraling path because we expect God to answer our request the way we want, when we want. And when it doesn't happen, we begin to doubt God. And the doubt and sadness can lead to depression. In the last two episodes of this series, My God Grief, I talked about denial and anger. And although there was no particular order for the stages of grief, I'm pretty sure denial and anger is where most of us start. Grief is an experience that has been embedded in my life. Even now, I wonder why I had to go through such traumatic life experiences, especially so young. But I'm reminded by the saying that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, and with his strength, I carry on. It is in the difficult moments that I understand and I'm more sympathetic to the needs of the people, especially now during these times when we spent so much time without human connection last year and without being in the house of God. For me, Not being able to attend church in person 
put a damper on my spirit. There is nothing wrong with the virtual service my church family has produced. But for me, I miss the fellowship and the ability to worship with my church family. The release you get after a long, stressful week for crying out to God among those like-minded and like-spirited and focused on Christ. When you're down in spirit and the opportunity to join hands with a prayer warrior at the altar as you join in a grant for better days. As many of you went through and were introduced to grief in various forms, the only place you could take comfort last year was to quarantine in your home, Netflix, YouTube, or maybe going to the grocery store for supplies to eat your feelings. So here we are, back talking about grief. My God, grief, part three. The Friday before my mother was found, I had texted her because I had begun working, cleaning up the backyard and selling any scrap equipment that was of no longer use to her. A young man that day purchased an old riding mow um, for parts, and I could often hear the strain in her voice when she was not breathing well. Oh, how I wished I would have called her instead of texting her. But as we know, once texting became a thing, real phone conversations became minimal. I was told after her passing that on that Friday, she was breathing bad at work. The next day, her breathing was labored, so she called off from work. Something she never does. How could I not blame myself? I was her daughter, and she was sick, and I didn't even know she had passed on. But the word, Proverbs 4 and 7 says, Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. When it comes to life and death of mankind, we cannot lean into our own understanding because it will forever leave us in a state of disappointment. In bargaining about the loss of a loved one, you cannot blame yourself. Life has its moments where we feel we are in control. When we're actually not. Why does an athlete who has taken care of his body end up with cancer and die a struggling death? Why do some children never get to enjoy life as many of us do? Why did the coronavirus cause so many to have to die alone? I do not have all the answers. And this series is not about me providing information as if I am a grief expert, but an empathetic soul with a heart to encourage others that better days are on the horizon. You must trust your process and you must submit to your process and seek the purpose for your pain. And when I say submit, sometimes we know the things that we need to go through or the real, how to handle the reality of the situation, but we don't want to submit to that order. And with death, it's hard to submit because sometimes we feel like if we submit to our process of healing, that means forgetting about our loved one. And if we don't stay in a state of mourning, that means we love them less. And it doesn't. You can love them. Have peace, heal, and move on with life. Playing the blame game allows you to ponder thoughts that your actions could have preserved their life a little while longer. But we are not God. He has the power over life and death. 
And it is him who decides when and how we take our final breath. Release yourself today of believing you have greater power than God to change his timetable. Forgive yourself, forgive them, and forgive God. Yes, I said, forgive God. We have the ability to get upset with God and cut him off, just like we do anybody in the physical when their actions have caused us unwanted hurt or pain. Maybe you did not do everything you felt you could have or should have for your loved one. Forgive yourself. God has. Maybe you had to cut them off along the way to protect your peace. Do not feel guilty. Forgive yourself. Because only God can change people. Not all death ends with us peacefully at their bedsides. If your loved one died from suicide, that can be extremely rough to accept and not beat yourself up about. Suicide leaves us with a lot of unanswered questions. And as I read on social media, suicide is taking your pain and passing it on to someone else. After being in therapy for four years, I honestly believe some people are stuck in a mindset they cannot escape, at least not without help. That is why the word says for us to renew our minds daily. Just as we would not go to bed angry, do not lay down with the mindset tomorrow will be the same as today. You may cry today and possibly smile tomorrow. There is hope to heal from your hurt. But you must be realistic. As hard as it may be, you have to be realistic about your loss. Is there anything you can offer God that will resurrect your loved one? John 14, 1 and 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus said, he goes to prepare a house for us. So would you have a home and never live in it? And one of the questions I have asked myself, what would my loved one have been doing if still in this natural world? That question allows me to be selfless enough not to wish them back here. And as for my mother, every time I ask myself that question, I realize her work here on earth was really done. After her almost leaving this earth in 2004, she had the opportunity to have an even greater relationship in Christ. She helped encourage others who became widowed. She found a church home which gave her the opportunity to serve and receive the word. She gave her all to patients she took care of at her job. And most importantly, she gave her all to me. So as much as we would give for the opportunity to have time with our loved ones once again, are we being fair to them? Does more time mean they would have been healed or remained suffering? Does more time mean they would have died a different way? Who are we to tell the God that created us it was not their time? 
bargaining usually applies when we want to make a purchase for less than its value. There's no number of dollars, actions that can equal the value of my life. And I hope you have a better understanding when you say I would give anything for my loved one to return that your anything does not equal the value of their life. Some of us would say we would trade places with them if we can. But if you could, I don't really think you would. Because if you are still here, your work is not finished yet. Trading places is once again like telling God you know better than he does. And we can only see a small part of his plan. Grief, it is normal. Do not believe that... There is a time limit of when you should be over your loss. Never rush through your process because healing takes time. Adjusting to their absence takes time. And grief is trauma. Talk to someone about your experience. Not everyone will understand, but pray And seek God because there is someone who will. Father God, I come to you now. As I process with those listening this series of grief. I know that many feel lost when their loved one passes on. Many Doubt that they will ever get past that void and that pain. Help them understand, Father God, that they're not alone. That there's someone in the world with those exact feelings of hurt. That as each day passes, life improves. They smile again without the guilt of feeling like they're leaving the memories of their loved one behind. We can love them and live at the same time. We can love them and honor them without living in a state of mourning and depression, Father God. Wrap your arms around every last one of them, Father God, that is hurting. Especially those that have lost a loved one to suicide. To those that have had to bury a child. Who seek understanding about your work. I pray for the hearts of those that are angry with you, Lord. And have cut off a relationship. Don't want to hear you any longer. Because they sat at that bedside and they prayed for healing on this side. But you healed them on. Your side, you took them home to the home that you're building for us. Let them have a heart of flesh to understand your work. And that even in their sadness, they are able to be grateful for the years and the time that you allowed. They are able to be grateful That they have a comforter that they can seek and go to you, God, one-on-one. I thank you right now, Father God, for using me, for these listeners. For using my life to help another person. To plant the seed of hope in their life. That even though you have dark days. You can pick yourself up and keep moving because you are not alone. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen.
I am Everett Maxine, and I would like to thank you for listening to The Absence of Her. Please like, follow, and most importantly, share.